Hey everyone, it's Shaf, aka That Mill Guy, coming at you with my brand new series for the channel. It's gonna be my road to a 5 0. Now, as you can see, due to the length of the video, obviously it's not going to contain a raw, uncut five game modern league. Well, if you're a fan of YouTube channels such as Magic Aids, uh, link down below to his channel, of course. If you're a fan of his videos and the style that he does, that's what I was trying to go for. All right. The cutting down and the editing of it and making sure that these leagues are digestible well you're gonna feel right at home okay obviously i may not be able to emulate the dank humor that he has but we're gonna have some humor because you know what's life without some right now getting into it if you like what you're seeing and you want to see more style of you know these kind of videos then you know comment down below let me know what you think and of course like the video as well as that's the best way that i know that everyone's liking what they're seeing Okay, now before we get into some deck building uh, decisions, let me give a quick shout out to the Patreon, okay, the individuals that help keep the quality up and the lights on. And of course, if you want to get foil cards and get to see my videos early and soon, coming soon, exclusive Patreon videos then link down below join my patreon okay now getting right into it the one deck building decision that i want to talk about going into this league is primarily me taking out leyline of sanctity i like to bring in leyline of sanctity when the meta is a little bit uncertain okay so when burn and decks like prowess are able to take advantage of people's deck building decisions and all the brewers and everything well not that the meta has settled down a little bit we see a little bit more titan a little bit more john you know some of the usual characters in modern now i can take out those line of sanctities and be hopefully a little bit more effective with those sideboard slots and well we'll see if we get punished for that okay so i'll catch you guys on the other side for the games the deck list is of course available in the link down below and remember that even the impossible is possible and as we ponder that thought please join me next time and for the games as we take a glimpse into the unthinkable So going into game one, we look at our hand, we look at our seven, our opponent plays first, and we'll take the risk and we'll play. We're playing into the blind. Keep. Ooh, a fetch. Let's go, boy. Archive Trap reveals some very interesting things here. I think we're going to surgical Ren and Six. Looking at their deck, they have no more Ren and Sixes, but they have Blood Moons, they have Ensnaring Bridges, and they have Chandra. So this looks like some type of prison list. We play Polluted Delta because we're tired of drawing lands. They play a Bloodstained Mire and Inquisition us. I don't know if Visions was the correct pick here, but we'll fetch and pass the turn. Just hold on, they're doing something. No, they didn't do anything at all. We'll just fetch and pass the turn. We play an island and feel pretty happy about the Mesmeric Orb we just drew. So they pass the turn, we get back to resolving some orb triggers. We draw a really ineffective Crypt Incursion, but we have to expect that they may play Blood Moon. So what we're going to do, we're going to play the Oboro in case we get the opportunity to play a Visions. We play a Blood Crypt untapped. Karn the Great Creator! Engineered Explosives is pretty correct here. I was thinking maybe Trinisphere. We play a Swamp, pass the turn as we're hoping to cast Visions on their upkeep. In terms of cards that we want, Surgical is going to go in the graveyard. Hedron Krat stays on top. Visions draws us some beautiful stuff. They get a Witchbane Orb. It's probably more correct for them to play the Witchbane Orb first. We play a Hedron Crab. We feel to ruin them to Oblivion. Oh, what? No! We cling to Dust the Blood Moon to get something. All right, all right. And alas, we don't draw an Archive Trap. So we pass the turn and wait for them to resolve the Witchbane Orb. They fetch with Verdant Catacombs. They draw with Arkham's Astral. And there it is. Yep, he's got a clock. Back on our turn, we play Sheldock. Sheldock finds Visions of Beyond. And then we play our Mesmeric Orb and just pray. Oh, for some reason, it's our turn again and they did nothing. We opt to pass the turn and hold up Cling to Dust. Karn pluses on Mesmeric Orb. All right, in response to that, cast Vision. Oh, uh, ultimately, they play another Karn. We play a Hedron Crab. We collect a Brutality, our own Hedron Crab, in hopes of Crypt Incursioning ourselves. Now that I'm thinking about this, the more they uptick on the Orb, the more chances we have to actually kill this thing. So it's not actually that bad. Here, we're actually hoping to draw a Fatal Push, because a Fatal Push is actually lethal here. Alas, no Fatal Push. Our opponent draws with their Astrolabe. In response to the Thoughtseize, we might as well gain some life. And surgical away the Ensnaring Bridges that they may or may not have left. Ah, uh, they're both in their hand. So our opponent tutors. Welding Jar. Oh, right. 
Oh, yeah, there it is. There's the bolt. Going into the second game, our hopes aren't high, so we take out a bunch of subpar cards and bring in a bunch of less subpar cards. I would love to be on the play. Sure, I'll keep it just on the basis that it has removal and interaction. Dark Sick Shores, Crab, Bolts the Damn Crab. Definitely feel like I need to hold up some form of interaction for a potential Blood Moon that's coming. Regardless, I counter the Renin Six, cling to dust my own spell pierce so I have enough cards in their yard so that I can counter the Blood Moon next turn. Well, we're not here to cast Glimpse, we're here to stop Blood Moon. Oh, F off. We play Dark Slick Shores, cast our Glimpse, because we have nothing better to do, and hold up Fatal Push. Yep, that's going to be a concede. These are exactly why we need to be splitting up the leagues into a competitive and a more casual league. This merging of the leagues is exactly why nonsense like this is allowed to be facing me. Going into game two, I'm hoping that we can play something a little bit more meta. So, we're on the play. This hand is so close. This hand is much better, so we keep and we drop the Watery Grave. This is an Urza list. Fetch on our end step. All right, Surgical's pretty good, so let's see what our opponent is playing. Bant Control. Oh my god. Duh. On their draw step, we're going to Surgical the Force of Negation. We take out two forces from their deck. We look at the rest of their list, look at the one Jace in their hand, and we cry a little. Those don't look like Field of Ruin targets. Take the all too concerning Archmage's Charm. And pass the turn. God, it's Astrolabe Tron. Value engines. Well, this is pretty useless, so let's just glimpse them. Our opponent decides to play a giant Uro instead of casting Jace. And I, for one, give my opponent a hands-off for being rather ballsy. Well, I can't feel to ruin anything, so play the land and play the bridge. Yup, there's the win condition. The only hope I have on this fate seal is if he bottoms the card, puts the card on top of the damn library, and that literally just wants to make me concede. Going into game two, we're going to take out subpar cards for some less subpar and some really good cards. I would love to play first. This hand is doo-doo. This hand is better. I played my Wadi Grave tapped because I don't think countering an Arkham's Astrolabe is how I'm going to win this game. Predictable. Drawing a Drown is rather useless here, but we got Glimpse at least. Hey, we got rid of a Goyf and a couple of counter spells. Back on our turn, we draw Trap, which I'm pretty happy about. We have all types of interactions, so I'm really hoping they trigger this trap. Our opponent opts to do some nonsense at the end of the turn, but we'll let it pass. The Quaddle swings in, and I regret not countering that Astrolabe more and more. I think we have to drown in the lock this. I have a really good feeling that this is about to get Force of Negation. All right, the Mesmeric Orb sticks, and hopefully this can ride us to victory. Mail, mail, mail. Opponent plays Ghost Quarters, and they're making their land drops. They play Jace, and I completely forget that we are interaction down. I mean, at least the Mesmeric Orb punishes them. They fate seal us again. They leave the card on top of our library, which makes me sad. At this point, we want to Echoing Truth the Jace. Moments like this make me really sad. And, uh... <sighs> so we'll resolve our Mesmeric Orb again. And, uh, again, hope it rides us to victory. And these fate seals are brutal. They leave the card on top of our library, which is, means it's going to be something they want us to mill. But huzzah! I have Visions of Beyond. We play a land and attempt to resolve a glimpse. Oh, it works! Looks like our opponent literally just wants Ultimate Jace to win here. Ooh, puts the card on the bottom of our library and destroys all of our Hedron Crabs. Really not a fan of that. Well, there you go, kids. I drew absolutely nothing. And on to game three. Going into game three, I'm starting to consider the viability of Mill in general. Our opponent starts the game with their seven, and maybe them starting the game is going to finally break the curse, because maybe being on the play isn't what we're meant to do. But regardless, we got a mulligan. Now this hand is much better. We'll just drop a watery grave. Come on, fetch, fetch, yes! This is really what dreams are made of. Breeding pool, gilded goose. Sorry, everyone. That, that was just me coming back to make sure I'm, I'm in the right time zone and right time. Just to make sure that Oko is still banned. But, all right, guess we'll respond to this. What the nonsense is this? I'm going to play this Watery Grave tapped. And potentially what I'm thinking here is Mishra's Bobble is usually played as a four of. So, 
if I can surgical the Mishra's bobble, then I'm probably miles ahead here. Now we don't catch any in their hand, and I guess Emery would have been the nut call here. But alas, Emery can't be played anytime soon, so we're pretty happy about this. Earl for value is interesting. Now they're even farther from casting Emery, honestly. We play Dark Slick Shores, and I think it's in my interest to actually just hold up the Drown in the Lock for an Emery. Well, it's not Emery, but three mana six sixes are pretty counterable. Modern's in a weird place right now. Play a Hedron Crab, shock in a land, and play our Glimpse. Yep, we mill over more Uros, and I start thinking about how I really need to bring in those Ashioks. Now they play Uro again, but considering it's Staring Bridges in our hand, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Mystic Sanctuary is exactly not what we want. EE on zero is interesting. I guess they just want to get an Emery out. Predictable. All right, well, they milled over a second Engineered Explosives, but at least we get to mill them for six. And now we pray. They tap Emery to play EE on one, which seems like a pretty logical move. Urza Lord High Artificer is a problem in some very weird ways. Bye bye Hedron Crab, but at least they lost their goose. Back on our turn, we draw Cling to Dust. So, why not? Let's see what we can draw. I'm gonna target the Walking Ball Ballista just because I feel like that is exactly how they're gonna get around this bridge. Arkham's Astrolabe is a big problem because, again, this gives them access to the third color they need to cast Engineered Explosives for three, killing the Instaring Bridge. So, we really need to find an immediate solution. They pass the turn with no attacks. Well, that's almost complete. Completely not terrible. What's nice here is I think I would actually rather cling to dust as engineered explosives than surgical. We draw archive trap and, well, I really hope we draw land. So we kind of cut out quick there, but our opponent conceded right after that because, uh, yeah, we had the graveyard hate. Going into game two, I'm going to keep things really simple. I don't think we need to overboard here. We're going to remove this stuff because it doesn't seem that great. And we're going to bring in some more graveyard hate for the Uros and some of the other shenanigans that they have going on. Going into the second game here, our opponent keeps their seven. And our seven isn't that bad just because we have the surgical extraction. So if they manage to get off an early Oro or an Emery, we should be able to punish them. So let's keep it. Fine, you can play your Arkham's Astrolabe. Mishra's Bobble is fine, that's a redraw. Opponent mysteriously doesn't crack their Bobble and decides instead to play a Tarn and Fetch. Ah, uh, getting out Emery makes sense. Goodbye, Titan boy. Ha, uh, we got one in hand and two in the yard. So we play our land, we know they have a Metallic Rebuke in hand, which they cannot cast, so I think we're gonna take the opportunity to actually resolve our Mesmeric Orb. Play an Arkham's Astrolabe. They recast their Mishra's Bobble. Let's see if this glimpse resolves. Nope, oh, and there it is. I'm starting to wonder if maybe killing this Emery was the better idea. All right, so that's an EE on two with Metallic Rebuke up. Archive Trap is nice. Hopefully we can draw a field, but I think my master plan here is going to be casting visions on their turn and hoping to counter anything that they decide to play. We cast our visions. Yeah, that's going to be a no for me, dog. Now that's a draw three. They play Mox Amber and then Mystic Sanctuary. Target Cryptic Command, but little do they know we drew our Field of Ruin. Some Orb triggers later. Just to be completely safe, we drew the Surgical, so let's Surgical out the Rebuke we know they have in hand. Yoink and yoink. All right, boys, finally we get our W, so let's sequence this properly. Step one, we Field of Ruin, the Mystic Sanctuary. Step two, we resolve Archive Trap. Step three, we resolve Ashiok Dream Render. And our opponent concedes. Now, you really could have done that in any order. They had no real way to respond to any of that. Th that game was over. But hey, it's nice to finally get a W. Going into game four, we're coming fresh off a win. But another thing that's great is, well, we're not on the play anymore. So hey, we've lost on the play and we've won on the draw. So let's keep it going. We'll keep it. Okay, now this scares me. Yep, nothing changes, still getting fatal pushed. Wall of Roots? Okay, see, like, I want to hold up mana so that we could potentially triple Archive Trap, but I also know the chances of that happening are so small. So I really just have to go for it with the glimpse. What the actual nonsense am I looking at right now? Oh god, what I would give to just draw a Field of Ruin next turn. Well, it's not a Field of Ruin, but... Hopefully at some point they search their library. So we drown the Yawgmoth because this seems like some type of green-black value train list, and we pass a turn and hope that maybe they're not a budget list, and they fetch and search their damn library. Well, that's not a fetch land. 
What? Well, I mean, to be fair, they, they just searched their library, so I can't be too mad at this. Yoink. Second yoink. All right, well, here's the visions of Beyond absolutely ending this game. Well, I mean, I guess that's technically ending this game, so let's do it. Man, I'm gonna be honest here. Crypt Incursion looks insane against this matchup. All right, well, we play an island. Step two, we mission briefing. Our opponent didn't even want to see us go through it, but we cast Glimpse and we win the game, so let's go on to game two here. Going into this next matchup, we're going to shave some over-costed removal and bad utility for some under-costed removal and some graveyard hate, and we'll see what we can do from there. Now, this might be a greedy key, but our opponent is mulliganing. We have multiple opportunities to find three lands, and I feel like if we resolve Ashiok, we really win this game, so let's keep it. Honestly, never punished. So let's just play our Dark Six Shores, our Hedron Crabs, and laugh all the way to the bank. Yikes, haste and undying. So I'm gonna play this land, get them to mill some cards. Then my idea is I'm gonna hold up the Fatal Push for whatever they may want to Eldritch Evolution or Cord for. Uh, so they do play fetches. We definitely will be Fatal Pushing one of these. Oh, never punish, never punished. Play Mesmeric Orb, and essentially cantrip at the end of their turn, setting up for a massive Crypt Incursion, followed by an Insaring Bridge, and or an Ashiok. What the nonsense? Is that Cord for zero? What? Are we playing Legacy? I really hope they don't have some dumb overrun effect. Yawkmoth is actually perfectly fine. As promised, we draw with Visions. Before we pass things off though, I think it's going to be in our benefit to Surgical something out of the way. So let's Surgical away the Once Upon a Time that is likely a 4 of in the deck. Wow, okay, well, 2 hits is 2 hits. Didn't look like they did much. They brought in Veil and Damping Spheres, so we should be good here. Okay, so I'm going to be honest. The only thing that we get got by here is Veil of Summer. They have one Veil left in their deck. So I think it's better, by odds, to let them untap and then cast our Crypt. I should specify why that matters, just because they can actually sacrifice creatures to put counter minus one, minus one counters on other creatures and draw cards. So they can draw the Veil. All right, kill my crab. So we actually milled over the last Veil, so this is going to be perfectly safe. 31 life is beautiful. Now, a land would have been perfect to draw here, but Cling to Dust isn't the worst thing in the world. So, let's play the Ensnaring Bridge and hide behind it. They swing in with what they can because they recognize the urgency of the situation. Alright, a little bit of tutoring action. Gerald's Messenger is an interesting piece, actually. That's not a land. Regardless, we resolve Ashiok. Now, as they draw their last card, I think to myself that there's likely no conceivable way that they actually can get me from... 15 to 0. So let's see what happens. And alas, I was correct. All right, we're 2-2 and we can't 5-0. Let's see if we can get our money back. All right, folks, we finally did it. We're in game five. Now, we have lost the die roll, which has notably told us that we will likely win this game thanks to our luck. But unfortunately, we cannot keep this hand, but our opponent has kept their seven. So we mulligan. Now, this hand is much better. It is unfortunately mana high, but we'll drop a swamp and we'll go from there oh my god i hate these urza decks so 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 much but at least it's a favored matchup what in the nonsense is this i mean i guess it's an egg lotus bloom enters the exile zone you know what i like this deck when it was just a combo shell with mox opal okay it was much easier to deal with notably they did play a mystic sanctuary tap which tells me the rest of the cards in their hand are just non-lands Tapping out the Ghost Quarters for Chromatic Sphere makes me super happy because now we can Field of Ruin the Quarters. Now the idea is we're going to Field of Ruin here just in case they Ghost Quarter our Field of Ruin target to prevent us from forcing anybody to search their library. So let's make that happen. We get a Swamp to get an untapped Black Source for our Double Glimpse next turn. Now this is a real pile of cards. Man, it looks like there's no Counter Magic in this deck, but Hercules Recall or Rebuild would be insane against this deck we can play the hedron crab next turn i think it's more in our favor to just aggressively mill them out first glimpse second glimpse <laughs> so i just noticed the fates fetters and the second sunrise memes so it looks like some form of a storm deck now this is a really interesting play why are they doing this okay okay all right this looks like a giant fates fetters turn but to what end they're searching the library for an artifact, but to what end? Okay, Fate's reward is fine. Well, look, I'm just gonna pass through. We're gonna skip through this, and I'm gonna let you know if I lose or not at the end of this nonsense, okay? 
Ah, okay, everyone, we're back. So essentially, they had one last expansion explosion in their hand. They looped a bunch of artifacts for infinite mana, and they just got there in the end. Okay, so there wasn't much we're doing from there, especially just being, you know, empty handed, whatever it is, but we have a lot of ways to deal with this deck. Going into the next game, we're going to take out cards that are a little bit too slow or just don't do anything at all and bring in all the graveyard hate and interaction that we can think of. All right, bada bing, bada boom, we're on the play. This hand is super bad. This hand is a little bit better, so we're going to drop the Drown of the Lock. So our opponent exiles a Lotus Boom and draws a card with Arkham's Astrolabe. They are already up to their shenanigans. Mill our opponent for three. Now those are some surgical targets. Now we pass the turn, do it on the draw, and we analyze from the last game that Conjurer's Ball was a key part of the combo. So we're going to definitely surgical that out right about now. So looking at what's going on, our opponent kept a hand with Silence, I guess, to stop us while they're comboing off. And they brought in three Leyline of Sanctity. So this is going to be really interesting if we can even get into a Game 3 scenario. Let's see what happens. So our opponent plays a Hallowfound Taps, which makes me feel a little bit better, just because we now have a Field of Ruin target. Now my opponent casting Silence on this turn really scares me, but... I think we just got to let it go and hope for it. I don't think there's really much else that we're going to be able to do. So let's let them have it. Okay, everyone, I'm just going to stop this combat halfway through just because our opponent has assembled essentially a chromatic star, multiple mana sources, a mystic sanctuary returning their fates reward, blah, blah, blah. Exactly like last turn, they're going to get to their deterministic win. They have casting silence, so we cannot respond. So alas, those are the end of our games. Now going into it as a whole, I'm not too upset, honestly. I, I, I'm really not. We didn't face a lot of meta decks, and considering what the meta is right now, especially at the tournament level and everything, if we were to face up against that, we would have a lot better time. All these random jank decks running around the MTGO leagues, that's exactly what happens. You run up against them, and it's what happened when you consolidated both the casual and the competitive leagues. But ah, blah, blah, blah. I'm being a sourpuss right now, but it's okay. Remember to catch me next time on the next video. Other than that... Have a good night, everyone.